that resistance we call it uh, the term is given as resistance now certain derivations and everything we had already covered so that i'll send you the video lectures or if you wish i'll give you the backup of it now formula of resistance came out to be this ml divided by a n e square tau so m is mass l is length of conductor a is area of cross section n is number density e is the electronic charge tau is the average relaxation time so that will not get clear until and unless you are not aware of the term drift velocities and all drift velocity we did we uh, did ohm's law all these topics are already finished that i'm mentioning you because obviously we do not have time so much today so that's why uh, we won't be able to cover it today but slowly and slowly you'll be able to get it now then we did the concept of resistivity resistivity is basically inversely proportional to the resistance resistance is equal to rho divided rho into l by basically what happened resistance uh, applied across the ends of the conductor it was directly proportional to length and it was inversely proportional to area of cross section so when we combine these factors we got resistance is directly proportional to length by area so the constant that we get to in removing the proportionality sign this is rho which we call as resistivity so uh, resistivity also we have covered few questions we have done on it i'll just i'll let you take the screenshot so what conductance and conductivity is what two topics that we have done conductance is inverse of resistance conductivity is inverse of resistivity you will understand these topics only when you are aware of the term of resistance and resistivity i am mentioning these terms today because in today's class these will be utilized your resistance term will utilize your resistivity all these terms will get utilized current density is a term that means current divided by area current per unit area so current was what current was rate of flow of charge current will be used in today's class electric potential will be used see electric potential is what electric potential is basically a scalar form of electric field electric field you might have studied in the first chapter electric field is the space around the charge where electrical from phenomena can be experienced like if you bring a negatively charged in the vicinity of this positively charged you will be able to feel this force of attraction or repulsion so that is because of the phenomena of electric field so electric field is what electric field is a vector quantity the scalar form of electric field is known as potential so electric potential will be used current will be used in today's class the rest of the and resistance the term resistance will be used so you should be aware of these terms if you have any doubts in these terms you can ask current you have already told you that is rate of flow of charge the formula of current is basically uh, i is equal to q divided by t these are one of the things that you should remember rest these things you will slowly understand variation of temperature these are whole lot big big topics that you should there is a formula for coverage of resistance and variation of resistance with resistivity so in today's class we'll start with emf internal resistance of a cell terminal potential difference that topic we'll do regarding the backup of these both classes i'll send you the video lectures or if possible i'll take your classes whatever suits you people i'll get you added in the whatsapp group as well so tell me any doubts you have have you done this uh, means what was the current physics lesson going in your school before your vacation started fatima I mean, already taken lessons. I'm asking you, what was the current physics lesson going in your school? Like right now, it must be your vacations. Before your vacation started, what yes. was the physics lesson going in your school, Fatima? It's um, moving charges and moving charges and magnetism. magnetism. So that was completed, or that was still going? No, no, it's still going. It's still going. Right now, your vacations are going, no? Yes. Sir. All right. Yes. And what about you, Razan? Mom, we were doing electrostatic potential and capacitance. Potential and capacitance before the vacation, no? Yes, ma'am. All right. Fine. So let's just 
let me just tell you regarding this lesson few points see everything won't be able to cover obviously it's a very short duration that we have so we have to complete the further topics as well uh rizan uh, that lesson was over or was it is it still going like when the vacations will get over your chapter three this chapter will start or the potential one will continue no ma'am we will be starting the chapter three after vacations all right we'll be starting vacations uh this chapter three fine fine that's fine, fine so uh i think you people will be needing these classes so i'll get you added on the whatsapp group as well then you can take down the video lectures also as well as you can even ask me any doubts if you have now um few things that are important from this lesson is the concept of current so basically in the concept of current you have current is what the rate of flow of charge now what is meant by rate of flow of charge rate of flow of charge means that something is getting divided by time when anything gets divided by time no we call it as rate so for example if you have a simple wire let's say you have this wire with you see i hope you understand the difference that when we deal with electrostatics that was your first unit uh, that deals with your chapter 1 and chapter 2 of ncert electric field electric charges and field and electric potential and capacitance that lesson it deals with so when we talk about electrostatics when we talk about these terms there the charges are at rest we are not allowed to use the terms like velocity acceleration for a charge charges are at rest whatever phenomena occurs occurs with the charges being at rest when you step into chapter 3 that is your current electricity from now onwards charges begin in motion they began their motion so we are allowed to use the terms like velocity we are allowed to use the terms like acceleration we are allowed to use the terms motion for the movement of the charges and therefore because of the movement of the charge we get the quantity that we call as the current so what happens as i was saying this is a simple wire it's a simple short wire present so amount of charge that is flowing through this wire amount of charges that is flowing through this wire in one second or you can say directly you can say rate of flow of charge whenever we use the term rate it simply means any th- quantity that changes with respect to time for example in your 11th class you must have done velocity velocity was what rate of flow of charges so rate of flow of charges means a uh, rate of uh, displacement velocity was so what was the formula of velocity that you received it was displacement divided by time so that's what i'm saying anything that gets divided by time you call the quantity as rate so rate of flow of charges becomes your becomes your electric current now si unit you should keep in mind that it is amperes this is the si unit amperes amperes is the si unit so that amperes is denoted by capital a like electric charge what is the si unit of electric charge yes class si unit of electric charge nobody has any idea must have used it electric charge ampere ampere is for current coulomb coulomb exactly electric charge has the si unit and that is coulomb so uh the si unit of charge is coulomb time is second so one coulomb divided by one second gives you one ampere that is your current so in brief right now i could just tell you this much only you can see the lecture video recorded lecture and see it in detail now what was drift velocity is concept i uh, let me explain you what was drift velocity that we did see whenever we have a wire with us wire can be simple simple normal wire like this simple normal wire like this 
obviously it's very difficult to draw it and show its cross sectional area what is inside with this diameter only so i'm just drawing it broadly otherwise it's a normal wire that we use in our headphones and our devices and all so if i say this is a cross section of a wire i have just enlarged the drawing inside a conductor or inside a wire there are many things present for example there are positively charged ions present there are electrons definitely electrons will be present so what happens is that whenever electric field is applied first tell me is the concept of electric field to uh, clear to both of you should i once repeat what was electric field because otherwise you won't be able to understand any concept further no it's clear for me it's clear for me rizan what about you clear yes i'm clear electric field is clear all right so again i'll repeat the, just the definition says that if you have a charge a charge has a space around itself where if you bring another charge you are able to experience different different phenomena like electric field you are able to experience you are able to experience electric forces so that phenomena is because of that space and that space is called electric field now what happens as we apply the electric field no or we connect the wire at the ends of the cell for example one wire towards the positive terminal second wire towards the negative terminal like this we have connected under the application of this when we have applied when we have tapped our key our circuit is open so what happens when our circuit is open then all the electrons tend to get attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery yes or no Uh, out of the negative terminal and the positive terminal negative electrons will tend to get attracted towards the positive terminal only so electrons get attracted towards the positive terminal now during this motion no when the electrons are beginning their motion towards the positive terminal of the battery what happens is that they collide with the positively charged ion electrons collide with the walls of the conductor electrons collide among themselves also so there is a different different collision that occurs so it means every electron will have its each velocity its own velocity let's say this velocity of this is v1 let's say the velocity of this electron is v2 electro velocity of this electron is v3 and so on let's say this is nth velocity so each electron is having its unique and different velocity so if i ask you what is the velocity of electrons that are flowing through this conductor what will be your reply you won't be able to tell one value out of all these you can't just say v1 because that's the velocity of one electron you cannot even say v2 that's the velocity of another electron so you, what is the velocity that you can define for electrons that are drifting towards the positive terminal you can take or uh, see the example best example is if there are so many students in a class and you have to find out what's the average score of the students what will you do? you will listen to all the scores for example out of 100 a person has scored 95 another person has scored 96 some students have scored 93 92 some school students have scored a perfect 100 so how do you define the marks what is the score of the class you take out the average that must be around 95 or something you take out the average that denotes the whole group similarly when we have different different electrons with us each electron associated with its respective velocity what do we do we take the average velocities of all the electrons when we take average velocities of all the electrons we get a single velocity this is the velocity which is known as this velocity is known as drift velocity why do we use the term drift velocity is that all the negative particles means all the electrons all the electrons get tend to attract themselves towards the positive terminal of the battery because negative and positive both will attract and all the electrons drift 
towards the positive term. So what's drift velocity? It's the average velocity with which all the electrons tend to drift towards the positive terminal of the battery under the application of electric field. Is the phenomena or the meaning of drift velocity clear to both of you? Any questions in this? No, it's clear. Clear? What is that? Yeah. Clear. All right. So there's a derivation for the calculation of drift velocity. Uh, in your 12th board examination, since this drift velocity is calculation and the derivation is very lengthy. So Many a times it does not come in the exam, but of course it's a part of your syllabus, so you should be prepared by it. Otherwise, just velocity's uh, derivation is a lengthy one. But we have a, let me show you the derivation. I think it's already written because we did it in this batch. So drift velocity, F is equal to QE starting from here. Acceleration is EE divided by M. From here, you should remember this. This is the final formula that comes out. Right now, no need to write it because everything you have to write it again. So it's better if you do not write it right now. I'll give you sufficient. So drift velocity is what? Minus E into capital E into tau divided by M. Now, what does each term represent in this formula? Vd is the drift velocity that I have already told you, which has a physical significance. The formula of drift velocity states the small e. The small e represents the electronic charge. Electronic charge is what? 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. This is the amount of charge that is present in a single proton or single electron. I hope you remember this charge because in your examination, this charge won't be given. An electronic charge value, this will be used till your semiconductor's lesson, till your last lesson. So it's better if you remember this value, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. That's the charge present on a single electron or present on a single proton. Right? Now, capital E is what? Capital E is electric field. Tau is average relaxation time. I'll explain you later. M is mass of electron. You can be confused by asking whether M is mass of electron or M is mass of conductor. Remember, M is not the mass of the wire where the electrons are flowing. M is the mass of the electron. And that mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kgs. This value also you should remember. At least the mass and the charge on an electron you should remember. Now, what is this term average relaxation time that has been used in the formula? Average relaxation time, I'll explain you. So, average relaxation time, in case of average relaxation time, what happens is uh, when the electrons collide among themselves, I will just wait for a minute. When two electrons collide with, among themselves, what happens is that there is a certain time gap when the electrons are not colliding with themselves. There will be a gap. No, if, if a, even if a person collides with another person, then before beginning the collision with the third person, you need a time gap, which is very small in fraction of seconds. That small time duration that is known as average, that is known as relaxation time. And obviously every electron will be having its own relaxation time. So combined effect, we get average relaxation. Clear to Razan and Fatima? Yes, ma'am. Fatima, clear to you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The rest of the derivations and the backups I'll give you later. I'll be sending you the video. Uh, Aman, I have sent you the video of electric field. Did you receive on the group? Uh, yes, ma'am, I did. All right. Now, uh, what happened? You're so late. I think half an hour has uh, passed. No? Uh, 20 minutes. Uh, 20 my minutes. laptop started restarting right. and there was nothing I could do to stop it. Oh, Now, see. Just a second. Now see, 
the topic that we have to start today is terminal potential difference emf and internal resistance see emf only you will be able to understand if you have the clarity of potential so again i am repeating potential is what potential is just a scalar form of electric field electric field was what electric field was the space around the charge potential is also a space around the charge it's also a property of a single charge in case of electric potential it's just that you don't need to add all of these vectorical you can add all the vectors uh, algebraically because these are not vectors these are potentials now moving on to this topic that is terminal potential difference emf and internal resistance these three topics now these are very important topics from your entrance view from your 12th board exams view questions do come from this part terminal potential difference emf and internal resistance and there's an interrelation between all these you don't need to separately separately remember all of these all the formula combines all of these so what i'm saying is that pay attention the resistance we have done resistivity we have done regarding razan and fatima uh, i think you must not be having idea of resistance i have told you no resistance is what resistance is opposition in normal english language also we use the term resistance that resistance is opposition to the flow of charges and that resistance could be provided by anything the immobile positive charges or anything fine so that quantity is resistance and those formula that i have shown you regarding ohm's law and the uh, that one ml divided by a n e squared that you will be understanding in detail because in just 2 to 3 minutes you won't get it but just be clear with the term resistance now regarding what is internal resistance and all if you go into the structure of a cell then only you will be able to understand see what happens how do we connect a circuit we connect a circuit using wire then we connect it with the bulb or the devices like ammeter voltmeter and then we connect the whole complete circuit to a cell to a key and all these things that's how we connect when we are just talking about that cell that battery that is connected if we just talk about that cell so when you see it and examine it carefully you know the actual representation of a cell looks somewhat like this inside a cell there's you must have seen all those cells that you connect in your remotes and tvs and all those cells so what's actually happening inside them you have a tin coating obviously and a coating of metals there but i'm talking about the structures which are present internally so you have two sets of electrodes electrodes are there obviously a cathode and an anode are present so these are what these are electrodes these are sets of electrodes present now these electrodes are dipped into a solution this solution we call as the electrolytic solution we call this solution as an electrolytic solution now what happens whatever is the resistance or opposition in the flow of charges offered by these two electrodes as well as this electrolytic solution we call that kind of resistance now that that resistance that is provided by the these two things electrodes and electrolytic solution that resistance we call it as the internal resistance by internal resistance because you have not connected any resistors in the in your circuit resistor or any device it's just a cell cell is always there in a circuit so whatever resistance is there by the cell itself it's inside the cell that's why we call it as internal resistance so it's what it's the resistance offered by the electrodes and electrolytic solution of the cell that's first quantity that is known as internal resistance now 
internal resistance is usually represented through symbol r and its si unit is ohm whatever is the si unit of resistance it's also si unit is ohm this symbol is known as ohm this symbol is actually known as omega but we call this in uh, the si unit of resistance as ohm ohm because of the ohm's law that i've already told so first thing was this i'll give you time to note this second quantity just understand the quantity first then you have the quantity which is known as electromotive force emf now first thing get it in your mind very clear that it's a misnomer electromotive force does not mean that emf is an actual force all the properties of forces that you have studied in your class 11th in your laws of motion and all those lessons regarding force emf is not a force emf all the properties of emf matches with potential it does not match with force there are many things where names are misleading like your centrifugal force or centripetal force centripetal force is also not something that is an actual that is provided by something else so in case of emf also emf is also not a proper force means force of attraction and all the properties of force that it is given by mass into acceleration those are not valid because it's potential whatever you studied for potential no work done in carrying a charge from infinity to a particular point that is applied for em now how is it different different from a normal voltage or potential that we have studied why do we have to name it specially as emf electromotive force there has to be a reason for this differentiation so whenever no open circuit and get the concept of open circuit and closed circuit here open circuit means your key is open so no current is flowing uh, closed circuit circuit is uh, when your key has been tapped mean the whole circuit has been completed current is running smoothly in an open circuit also current will obviously move on but because of the breakage i am saying open circuit mean there is a breakage in your circuit so emf is what basically it's the maximum potential difference that is applied across the terminals of a cell in an open circuit now we connect external resistors in our circuits an external resistor is connected usually in our circuit that resist that potential of that external resistor we call it as emf for example if you have an external resistor so whatever is the potential difference across this external resistor we call it as what we call it as emf that is electromotive force so maximum maximum value of potential difference that is possible maximum value of potential difference that is known as emf rest of the terms are known as potential normal simple potential waves so basically it's the maximum potential difference only like if it's a positive terminal of a battery it's a negative terminal of the battery here so this is voltage is at the higher end here the voltage is at the lower end voltage is low voltage is high so emf becomes what emf becomes vh minus vn like this or even if you reverse it this becomes vl and this becomes vh then your emf will still be vh minus v because that's the potential difference so you have to have a difference remember it's the maximum value of potential possible so second quantity is emf first quantity was internal resistance second quantity is emf last quantity then we'll stop for a while that is terminal potential difference so terminal potential difference is basically potential difference applied across see two definitions are there this very first definition which is written it says that it's the potential difference across terminals of the cell in a closed circuit means when you have completed your circuit your circuit is closed when the whole circuit is closed the the cell is there so at the terminals of the cell terminals of the cell means if this is your cell and here the whole circuit has been connected 
these are the terminals of the cell. So what's the potential difference at these two ends? We call it as the terminal potential difference. Or one di definition is there, one more point in terminal potential difference is there. Internal resistance, now we have studied right now. No, in case of internal resistance, sorry, one thing I just reversed it. In case of electromotive force, what's this internal resistance no, offered by, I have told you, the electrodes and electrolytic solution offer internal, uh, offer the internal resistance. The potential that is present, no, in these, that we call as the EMF. That's why in the circuit, it's not across the external resistance, sorry for that. See, whenever we connect a circuit, let's say a resistor is there, two resistors are there like this, we have connected a battery like this. We always write EMF over here. We never write EMF. We write it, but maximum time we write the EMF like this. The reason is that because it's the resist, that's the potential difference in the, in, uh, uh, that occurs in the internal resistor. Regarding potential uh, terminal potential difference, it can be potential difference across the external resistor. How? This is your external resistor. Let's say A point is there, B point is there. So V A minus V B will give you terminal potential difference like this. So three terms are there. I'm quickly repeating all these three terms. Wherever you have doubts, you can ask me. Internal resistance is the resistance offered by the electrodes, which are dipped with an electrolytic solution. And the electrolytic solution also offers a resistance or barriers to the motion of current. Second quantity is electromotive force, which means the maximum potential difference in an open circuit. Or you can just remember EMF is basically the resistance offered in the cell, which we have studied inside the cell, whatever is the resistance offered. Last thing that we have studied is the terminal potential difference. In case of terminal potential difference, it's the dif potential difference that up gets applied across the ends of something. Because terminal means what? Terminal means ends. So either it's the ends of resistor or it's the ends of the cells. So these three topics, we'll move on to formula. But first, tell me, definition is clear to all of you? Yes, no. Clear? Fatima, yes. I'm in? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, start noting down from here. If you have any doubts, ask me, I'm here. Otherwise, what you can do, you can even text me in the chat box, whatever doubts you have, or you can simply unmute yourself and ask me. We'll see the formula also. They have a relation. All of these are connected.
Oh, yes, Mariam. I'll I'll give you time to to take the screenshot. I've started from there only when you joined. No, that column. Did you take the screenshot of that portion initially? What was written internal resistance part? Ma'am, could you scroll back to the part like uh, from where you started? I joined and I didn't take a screenshot. <laughs> all, right, all right, I I'll show you. From here only. What happened to you, Mariam? Why did you join so late? It's now actually I was outside. All right, fine. So, Mariam, you were there in the last class. Last class yes, which we had. Last Sunday I was there. Okay. okay. Taken. Yes, ma'am. Done. Done, ma'am. Just take, uh, just write uh, done in the chat box when you've written this part.
now see these three topics we have done we will now connect all of these we'll see how to connect these using formula using mathematical relations you have physical meaning you have understood now just repeating in short what you, we have studied if this is a circuit no there are resistors present now how to find out the equivalent resistance of if different or more than one resistors are connected that we'll see series and parallel combination of resistor that we have a full uh, lesson or a class on that full lecture on that so that we'll see but right now just focus if this is an external resistor connected now what is meant by external resistor external resistor means if for example this is a wire i have and in the wire this is a wire that i have now i have connected a resistor at its end like this i have connected a resistor at its end now the other end i have connected to the other part of the wire so i have just inserted a resistor in the circuit that i am using so that we call as external resistor a resistor that we have placed by ourselves that is not already present inside the mechanism of the cell then we have a battery and one thing class the internal resistance no internal resistance of the cell it's the resistance that is present inside the cell inside this battery so how can we show it obviously it's not possible to show the inside of the cell so what we do we just draw this resistor in just very proxim close proximity of this like this this shows that this is internal resistance this has the emf itself so this quantity this quantity we have which is known as emf this quantity this is known as external resistor and the potential difference across its external resistor potential difference across its external resistor that you call as what that you call as the terminal potential difference the potential difference no lying here this is known as the terminal potential difference and this is known as the internal resistance now how to connect them um fatima can you tell me how many resistors are there in this circuit Hmm. No one. See, just look at it. How many resistors are you able to see? One. One is this one, or this one? The other one. Capital R or small R? Capital R. Small R is not a resistor. So resistance, no. So we'll include that. So two resistors. Fine, Fatima. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, Maria. It was two. So what will be the equivalent resistance of all these? Equivalent resistance, basically, not even writing the equivalent resistance. Let us not use this term because we have series and parallel combination. There we study. Now. according to ohms law so ohms law i am in can you repeat ohms law or just the formula of ohms law just the formula at least so formula of ohms law yeah. v v is equal to ir v is equal to ir perfect so v is equal to ir this is from ohms law all those who students who are not there just pay attention to this from here current can be written as what v divided by r what is playing the role of potential over here emf that what that's what i have told you no potential's role has been played by emf so current becomes what instead of voltage we have emf instead of resistors what's the resistance it's external resistor plus internal resistor as rightly stated by fatima and mariam that there are two resistors so we'll combine and write it this becomes the formula of current through the circuit when internal resistance is given and emf is given. that's the first formula now if you have emf with you 
you have value of current so potential was what potential was i into r so potential becomes what write the formula of i i is e divided by r plus r multiplied by this capital r did you get it v is equal to i r so this also becomes formula of this terminal potential it becomes the formula of the potential find potential across the external resistor which is the terminal potential difference this is potential difference across external resistor why because current into external resistor not internal resistance if you have to find out the potential across internal resistance then you write it as v is equal to i into small r take the internal resistance of the cell this becomes the formula for potential difference across internal resistance resistor one more formula that you have for terminal potential difference apart from this one is v is equal to e minus i r this is one more formula for terminal potential difference v is equal to e minus i e is emf i is current small r is internal resistance so these are some formula and on that i have written a formula based question exact formula based question so do one thing note down this formula and then try that question
try this question whoever gets the answer keep on sending it in the chat box like with the part first part this answer like this everything is given it's a formula based question whatever you studied over above it that's written over here this is external resistor is 10 ohms internal resistance is 1 ohm emf is 22 volts current is asked potential difference across external resistor is asked potential difference across internal resistor is asked and finally the terminal potential difference. just try it please. take two to three minutes try this question then we'll discuss it
so only fatima has answered okay fatima has answered all the parts my fatima let's let's check your answers i think it is correct let's just check it once again see uh current is what current's formula that we have studied is emf divided by external resistor plus internal resistor so uh, razan can you tell me what's the emf of the cell external resistor is 10 ohm internal resistance is 1 so this becomes 22 divided by 11 that gives 2 ampere second part potential difference across the external resistor that is v is equal to ir or you can put in this complete formula both of the ways are same if you even if you put the complete formula at then you will get 2 over here external resistor mariam can you answer now what's external resistor external resistor and internal resistor you must not be able to differentiate since you joined late see internal resistance is the resistance that is offered within the cell itself so we just write it in closeness with this or just side with uh, side to the cell that we call it as the internal resistance this is an external resistor this you connect it specifically with the help of wires and external aids so this is external resistor we will be calculating how to take out equivalent resistance and all everything internal resistance is in turn uh, resistance offered by the electrolytic solution and the electrodes so that's within its the cell itself capital r is external resistor yeah mariam an internal resistor is resistance is small so capital resistance is 10 this is 20 volts third part potential across potential difference across internal resistance that becomes v is equal to i into small r so current is 2 small r is 1 that becomes 2 volts last part says what terminal potential difference Terminal potential difference V is equal to E minus I R. You can use that's the best way to calculate it. V is equal to E minus I. E M F is twenty two minus I R. You have calculated that's two. That becomes twenty. So let's uh, let me just check the answers of Fatima. Two amperes twenty. Uh, everything is perfect just the units ohm is for resistance here we are writing the voltage so that will be volt the rest of the things very well we have calculated everything perfectly fine fatima just see the units one so those who have not written it just note down the solution
I think you people must have written it by now. Those who didn't solve it that time, done class. Shall we move for forward? Yes, ma'am. Now see, uh, these are just few points that you should keep in mind while you have to deal with all these three topics and these formula. Regarding the formula that we have done, this formula is enough or, and this question is also sufficient to understand the formula. How the questions come from this part and how the questions are related to it, that we'll see later on when we'll see equivalent resistance and combination of cells. There you will see how equivalent resistance and if different, different cells are there. If a single battery is there, single register is there, single internal resistance is present, that then the formulas that we have studied are sufficient. Fine. Now, these three points are important from the point of view of your numericals, numerical solving. If your current is beginning from the positive terminal and ending towards the negative terminal like this, beginning from the positive terminal, ending towards negative terminal, then you use this formula, V is equal to I minus IR. That's the terminal potential difference. But if your current is moving from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal, like this, from the beginning from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, then we do not use this formula. Instead of minus here, we just use plus higher. This is known as charging of cell. This is known as discharging of cell. Okay. Discharge term you have already used. Cell is discharged. So in that case, we use V is equal to E plus I. So be careful when you are dealing with both the formula. Just in case if the current's flow has been reversed, then do not consider V is equal to E minus IR's formula. Do keep it in mind that you have to add it. Last thing, if key is open, then your key is open means, for example, the circuit is connected, your key is open. No current is flowing. If no current is flowing, so what happens? If no current flows, then this term becomes zero. If this term becomes zero, this term or this term, if it becomes zero, then potential difference at EMF get equalized. Clear? So note down these three points as well. These three are important from your numerical point. The rest of the things will be covered later on. Once we'll get over with series and parallel combination of registers, then we have equal and parallel combination of cells as well. Identical cells topic is also there. So not much is left now from this lesson. This, this current electricity is not a very lengthy lesson. Magnetics is lengthier than this. Next chapter that is present.
All right, class. So completed these three points as well. Just completed first. And those who keep on writing it down, just text me done in the chat box. So I get to know that you people have completed or how many of you have completed. Fine, so all of you have completed it. Now, uh, one thing I will tell all of you that there's a revision class tomorrow. You have your normal class timings from today. The way you had the timings, no, today it's from, I think, 4 to 6.30 for you people. No, 4 to 5.30 for you people. So tomorrow also you have the regular class. But for students who want to take this class can take up. It's not a compulsory class. It's just that I'm having this class. If anyone wants to attend, can differentiation you know so very basics of differentiation don't just get it uh, that it's a compulsory class for all of you to attend anyone who wants to get the very basic concepts of differentiation clear you can join if you think you are able to differentiate a value, you are able to put in the values after putting all the values, you are able to get the answer. And no need to attend this class. Otherwise, you will only get bored in the class because everything will be very basic. Not a, not level of difficult uh, questions will be provided or anything. Very basic level. Students of 11th are also there. Students of 12th will also join. So if anyone wants to have a revision of differentiation, you people can join tomorrow, 11. Can join a class tomorrow, 11 a.m. KSA timings. All right, for students, if you are here, then IST is, will be 1.30 p.m. IST. The class is on Sunday for time duration will be one again telling the very basics of differentiation like if y uh, to the power two is given so how to differentiate that very basic differentiation will be done but there are many students in class 12th also who are facing difficulties in differentiation that's why i just told or announced to you people as well if it's the same case with anyone of you you can attend the class just ask me i'll send the meeting link to anyone if you want Uh, Fatima, see, uh, regarding all these things, you will be informed or you can contact the team also. Okay, bye. Uh, Mariam, you're there on the WhatsApp group? No. You're not there. No, Mariam, Mariam. Ma'am, for physics? Yes, the physics group. Yes. You are there, no? All yes, right. All right. So there only I'll send the meeting ID. So whoever wants to join, you can. Uh, Fatima, regarding your thing, timings, I can tell. Re rest of the things, when to do installments and fees and everything, you can contact the team about it. Learn your team, that is different. Timings will be the same. That is for today. I think you had to join a little earlier today. Normally, 4 to 5.30 is your timings. KSA timings, 4 to 5.30. Uh, Indian timing, IST, that is 6.30 to 8 o'clock. These timings are fixed for your batch, Saturday, Sunday, weekend. Saturday, Sunday, both the days, one and a half hour, one and a half hour classes for both of them. Uh, just get yourself added on the WhatsApp group as well, both of you, Razan and Fatima, since Aman and Mariam, both of them are there in the group. Razan and Fatima. Uh, just get your self added in the group in which Mariam is there. So there also you get the updates if there are any tests or something because right now your batch has started so I wasn't taking any test. Sooner we will be having tests from small, small portions. We will be having a test. So the portions there and also regarding the backup classes or it happens sometimes your classes get mixed, uh, missed. So there also you can take the backup or something. Fine. Any doubts to anyone? Any questions? And should we stop? 
I'll stop here. If you have any doubts, any queries, ask me. Get yourself added on the WhatsApp group. Revise current electricity. And Razan Fatima, take the recordings of the first and second lecture of current electricity, if possible. Rest of the things, we'll keep on discussing it slowly uh, on Sunday as well. Tomorrow we have the class, and if you have any queries, any doubts, you can ask whatever you feel. It slowly, slowly, we are moving slowly. We are actually on the middle of this chapter. A small portion, not a small portion, a major portion is that is left is your equal interest that we'll complete later on. So, fine class, I'm stopping here today. Let's meet tomorrow then. All right.